it's Zoe. So today I am going to be talking about my April TBR. Is it April? It's April. Mother of God, it's April. As well as my magical readathon TBR. Plot twist, they are actually the exact same thing because this readathon spans almost the entire month and I've picked so many that it will definitely take all months to get through these. Before I get into what the magical readathon is, the language from the last video was Swahili and everybody got that one right and the movie that I was referencing was in fact Mean Girls. Like I said, it's a classic, it'll never get old. And the awkwardness from when she goes up to that table and goes, Jumbo! Ugh, I will never get over that. The language for today is yet again another one that I have never spoken. I may have only heard it once or twice, but we'll see how this goes. Today's language is Marhaba, Bugun, Sale. Marhaba, Bugun, is it like German? Bugun, Sale. Salle, salle, begun, salle. Marhaba, begun, salle. Salle, salle, salle. Marhaban, marhaban. What? What? Marhaba, begun, salle. We're gonna stop now. If you think you know what that language it is, language it is. My God. If you know or think you know what language that is, leave that down below in the comments. Okay. Now that that's out of the way, the Magical Readathon is a readathon created by G over at Book Roast. I will leave her video linked down below so you can go and hear her explain much better than I can what it's actually about. The basic gist of it though is that we are going to be sitting our OWLs, our OWLs, the Ordinary Wizarding Level Examinations. There are 12 subjects and therefore 12 challenges for this readathon. The readathon spans from April 2nd to April 29th. I'm a little bit late getting this video up, but I did start the readathon yesterday. I will get into that more later. Because we are sitting our owls and this is not just a regular readathon, there are three passing grades and three failing grades, just like in the owls in the series. So from the worst grade to the best grade, so the lowest grade you can get is T for troll and that is not showing up to any of your exams. So basically if you're not taking part in the readathon, you get a T for troll. The grade up from T is D for dreadful and to get a D you start but don't finish any of your exams. The next failing grade is P for poor and this is the final failing grade. For this one you sit and pass only one challenge. The passing grades start with A for acceptable. For this one you sit and pass two OWLs. E for exceeds expectations is the next one and you sit and pass three OWLs. The highest grade you can get is O for outstanding and for this one you sit and pass five OWLs. Now that we've got the grading system out of the way, here are the challenges and the books I have chosen for each one. Side note, I have Hermione's wand here with me. I am trying to channel Hermione. She got nine outstandings and one exceeds expectation in Defense Against the Dark Arts. I am hoping to finish at least ten of these challenges and make Hermione proud. The first subject is Ancient Room and the challenge is to pick a book with a symbol on the cover. For this one, I chose Frostblood by Ellie Blake. It has a little symbol thing here. I don't remember if that really has anything to do with the book. I read this one sometime last year. I've had the sequel on my TBR for quite a while now and it pops up on a later challenge, so I wanted to reread this one, remember what's going on, and read the second one all in one go. This series follows a girl named Ruby who is a fireblood, which surprisingly means that she she has the power to manipulate fire and heat and other hot things like that. As a fireblood, she is a second class citizen and the frostbloods, these guys, are the ones that run the show. Ruby's mom is killed while trying to protect her and Ruby's life takes a definite turn for the worse after that. She falls in with a group of rebels trying to overthrow the frostbloods. Frost Bloods. But before they can do any rebellious things, she's captured and thrown into the King's Tournament where he is pitting Firebloods against Frostbloods. To be quite honest, I don't remember much that happens in this book at all. I remember kind of liking it, it wasn't too bad, it was really tropey, but I want to give it a second chance and give the sequel a chance as well. The next subject is Arithmancy? Arithmancy? I don't really know how to say that word, but that's the next subject. This challenge is to read a book with a number on the title or in the cover. In the title or on the cover. That's how we use words. 
for this one, I chose City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I could have chose this for the symbols because there are a ton of symbols on his body, but it has the number one and I just got the fourth book in the series. I talked about that in another video. So I want to reread the first three books before I jump into the fourth one. So no time like the present. Also because it has the number one on it. I have talked about this series multiple times, how I've wanted to read it and here we are finally doing what I said I wanted to do. This series, if you haven't heard me ramble about it before and if you haven't watched Emma Books and her absolute love for this series, it follows a girl named Clary who finds out that she's a shadow hunter which means she has the power to fight demons. Because I'm reading this one in anticipation of reading the fourth one, I am piling on the other books in this series into my April TBR. They don't fulfill any challenges but I want to get them done. The other books are City of Ashes, City of Glass, and City of Fallen Angels. Like I said, only the first book really fulfills a challenge or whatever book I want to choose out of those four to fulfill that challenge, but apparently I hate myself and I like to make things difficult because this TBR got out of control when I was picking these books, but I have no self-control. So there's that. The next subject is astronomy and the challenge is to read a sci-fi. For this one I chose Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston, Poston, still unsure about that. I talked about this book in a video that literally went up yesterday so I will link that so I don't repeat myself a million times in a row. But rest assured it is a sci-fi. The next subject is Care of Magical Creatures and the challenge is to read a book that features magical creatures or has a magical creature on the cover. For this one I I chose Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I started this one last night. I'm just over 100 pages into it and I'm loving it so far. The thing is, I don't know if these creatures are magical or not, but they're not creatures that you would find on Earth. So I'm gonna count it. Also because I really wanted to read this one and it's really good so far. As of the last one, I just talked about this book and the next book really. So I will link that video so I'm not repeating myself the entire time. And I feel like this video is gonna get really long if I keep doing that. So we're not gonna do that. The next subject is charms and the prompt is to read a fantasy novel. This one, because it's so open-ended, was kind of hard but kind of easy at the same time because I have a lot of fantasy books that I haven't read and a lot that I have read that I want to read again. So narrowing that down was difficult but in the end I went with The Bells by Danielle Clayton. Like I said, I talked about this in the video two videos ago, I think. I have heard nothing but good things and I'm really looking forward to this one. The next subject is Defense Against the Dark Arts. And the prompt for this one is to choose a book with a secret society or a secret club. For this one, I chose the Dark Days Club by Alison Goodman. I read this one, I think, last year and I got the second book. Ooh quite a while ago. I don't know. I wanted to read the second one for a while so I decided to go with this one for the secret society because I remember there's a secret society but I don't remember that much else. So we're going to reread this one before I get into the next one which is The Dark Days Pact. The Dark Days Club is a historical fiction fantasy and I remember that there are demons and I don't remember much else about it. The next subject is divination and the prompt is to read a book that features prophecies. This one was super easy because I am currently reading this. I started it at the end of March and I still haven't finished it yet so we're gonna do it now. For this one I chose Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince heavily features a prophecy and I'm still in the middle of rereading the series because that's taken me forever. Oh, I don't know why I do this to myself. I've mostly been listening to the audiobook though. I haven't really been reading the physical copy, which is probably why it's taking forever, but it happens. Like I said, I have no self-control and I can't keep my TBR to a reasonable number ever because why would I want to do that? I'm definitely going to be reading the next book, which is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I'm going to finally round out this series. I have been rereading since the middle of March, I think, like second week of March maybe. Speaking of, the reading vlog for that week, it was supposed to be a day and then it turned into a weekend and then it turned into the whole week because life happened and here we are almost a month later still trying to finish this. That vlog will be going up sometime later this week where you can see me struggle to read my favorite series because I don't know why, but I struggled this time. Not because I didn't like it, just because I had so many things going on. And of course, the one time I become social is the one time I want to sit down and reread Harry Potter for like the 37th time or something. Maybe that's a sign that I should read something else and branch out a little bit. Probably not. The next subject is 
Herbology. And the prompt is to read a book with a nature type word in the title. For this one, I chose Fireblood by Ellie Blake. If you can remember that far back, the first book in this TBR is Frostblood, the first book in this series. I don't even want to know what this is about yet because I don't want to spoil the first book for myself and for anyone else. So we're just going to move on to the next book now, but I really like this cover. The next subject is History of Magic, and the prompt for this one is to read a historical fiction. For this one, I chose the only historical fiction that I have that I haven't completed, and this one is... Prince of Shadows by Rachel Kane. I talked about this in my favorite non-fairy tale retellings video, I think it was. This is a Romeo and Juliet retelling, but it doesn't focus on Romeo and Juliet. Benvolio is the main man in this one, and I read half of it one time back in the day, and then I got a bunch of other books, and I put this one down, and I forgot to pick it back up. Shame on me. But I really enjoyed this one, and I'm really excited to get back into this and finish out this book. The next subject is Muggle Studies. And the prompt for this is to read a muggle nonfiction book. I struggled so much with this one. I hate nonfiction. I've read a couple and they're kind of interesting and I never wanted to do it again. I have a small section of nonfiction down in that corner there and I was thinking of rereading Scrappy Little Nobody by Anna Kendrick, but while I love Anna Kendrick and it was interesting, I was bored the entire time. And then I was thinking I might just skip this whole challenge entirely until I remembered this book. This is probably one of the only non-fiction-y type books that I've ever read that I actually really enjoyed. Probably because I'm obsessed with Hamilton, but what can you do? This is hefty, like it's it's large, but it's wonderful. And it was a really quick read, although I did have to stop and listen to each song when it got to the lyrics because it has wonderful pictures. Beautiful. It's got the Obamas. Beautiful. And it has the lyrics. It's got the lyrics to every song. And you can't just read the lyrics without listening to the songs because why would you do that and pass up a chance to listen to the musical all over again? And it's got cast photos and I love it. And it's beautiful and I love it. Did I say that already? I love it. So thank God I remembered this book because now I can finish all of the challenges possibly. The one that's still giving me trouble is the next one, but I wanna talk about how much I love this book even more. But I'm not going to because if I keep looking through these pictures, I'm going to sit here and reread this when I'm supposed to be finishing this frick frackin' video. I gotta get it done so I can look at the pretty pictures. <sighs> that got intense, I'm sorry, I apologize. My love for Hamilton is just all consuming. Next one. The next subject is potions and the prompt is to read a book that has alchemy in it. This one gave me a lot of trouble too. The only book that I can really think of and that I've seen other people mentioning for their TBRs for this challenge is Everless. And I just finished reading Everless in February and I'm not about to reread that again because it wasn't that great and I don't wanna reread it so soon. So I don't know. I might go with A Discovery of Witches. I know my mom has it, but I don't have it. I don't know what else though. I think there's some sort of alchemy in one of the Game of Thrones books but I'm not ready to commit to that with this stack that I already have. I might go out and get The Alchemist of Loom by Elise Kova. I was gonna get that before, but I don't remember why I didn't end up getting it that time. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. If anybody has any good recommendations for books with alchemy or alchemists, let me know in the comments so I have a wider range. Also Strange the Dreamer, but the second book is coming out sometime later this year and I want to reread Strange the Dreamer right before I read The Muse of Nightmares. I don't want to read it now and then have it come out several months later and forget what happened. I really want to read a book for this one so I can finish every challenge and not just have one straggler because that would make me so angry on so many levels. I can't even think about it. Just no. Moving on. The final challenge is Transfiguration. And the prompt for this one is to read a book that has some sort of transfiguration, shape-shifting, that sort of thing, or a cat on the cover. For this one, I chose Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grodden. I read this one last year. I talked about this in my non fairy tale retellings video as well. The second book has been on my TBR for a while, so I want to read this one and read the next one, hopefully this month if I get around to these. The main character has the ability to transform herself into any other person. Really? She's a metamorphagus? 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 Metamorphagus. 
I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce that word because I've never really heard it said and I don't remember how they pronounced it in the movies or in the audiobooks. So here we are struggling now, but she's that. She can change her appearance at will. Like I said, I want to read the next book, which is Blood for Blood. Don't really remember what this one is supposed to be about, so it's gonna be a surprise. Right now though, I'm kind of second guessing these last two choices. I kind of want to reread the Confessions of Georgia Nicholson series because there is a cat on every one of those books, but I only have the first seven and there are 10 of them, I believe. I don't wanna go out and get the last books right now, so I might stick with these, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. This one is up in the air, but I do have choices for it, so I will complete this challenge one way or another. So those were the challenges and my April TBR. When I figure out a book for the potions challenge, I will have 18 books on this TBR. Unless I read the Confessions of Georgia Nicholson series, then I will be pushed well over 20 books. I believe in myself, kind of, not really, but I'm gonna pretend that I do right now. Actually, I think I read 18 or 19 in March, and this is like an average number for a good reading month. So there's a very good chance that I will read all of these and possibly more, but I'm gonna start with just these ones and see how it goes. I think that's all I really had to say for today. To stay updated with my current reads and how I'm feeling about them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads, all at your book nerd Zoe, which I will leave linked in the description box. As per usual, I update my Goodreads at least once a day with the current reads. All of those books just fell down. Awesome. If you want to keep up with my progress for this readathon, Goodreads is the best place for that, but it also links to Twitter so you can see it from there as well. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. I hope you all have a wonderful day and get at least a little bit of uninterrupted reading time. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!